Hello everyone, my name is Dakoba and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today we're going to be taking a look at drones and drone-based logistics, which are the last major logistics options which are opening up to us as we get into the final stages of the normal gameplay. Now drones are a unique form of logistics compared to the others we've seen. A drone network is made of multiple drones and drone ports. Each drone has to be assigned a single home port and can be connected to at most one other port. You can use this to create a spoke and hub network, which is what we'll be doing in this series, or you can do simple point to point or daisy chain based logistics as well. Now drones like trucks use fuel and their fuel is batteries. It's the only thing they can accept as their fuel, which means we're gonna need to make a factory which will produce batteries for our drones. That's gonna be our major build for today's episode. Now each drone must be assigned a home port and will carry goods to at most one other port. Now it is possible for multi dr multiple drones to have the same destination port, at which point they'll enter a holding pattern and sort of queue up in order to land there. Now, dr now while drones do travel quickly, they have small inventories and long takeoff and landing animations. Each takeoff and landing animation takes 51 seconds, and then drones will travel at about 3.8 kilometers per minute. Now drones can carry at most nine stacks of items, which means that the maximum possible through port for two drone ports that are quite near each other would be somewhere on in the ballpark of a Mark IV belt, but in general, it's much more realistic to see throughputs ranging from uh, 60 to about 250 items per minute, depending on the distance between the ports and the stack size of the items that are, that are being transported. If you want to calculate out the specific throughput of your drone network, the information for that is provided in the drone port interface itself. Now we're going to be using drones to provide the logistics backbone for our end game space elevator components. We're going to be setting up a number of small production factories at remote outposts that will handle sort of the first processing step so that we aren't moving a huge amount of raw materials. And then we'll be transporting the smaller amount of more refined items into a central factory where we'll assemble it into the space elevator parts. But before we get started with that, we need to build a battery factory as well as a centralized drone port, which will act as the hub of our drone network. Let's get into it.
All right, and that is a battery factory all complete. Let's go through how it works. We start off by bringing in petroleum coke and bauxite from other areas in the swamp. We set up a small bauxite mine in the center of the area, and over at the far end, we're tapping a oil well in order to make some petroleum coke. We're bringing those in via tractor line. Those are coming in here and then being sent into a set of refineries. The bauxite is being combined with water to make alumina solution. The alumina solution is then being combined with the petroleum coke to make aluminum scrap. The excess water from those refineries is feeding back into the water line. And a bit of the alumina solution is being set aside for production into batteries. The aluminum scrap is being sent into a bank of smelters to be turned into aluminum ingots, which are then being sent into a set of constructors to be turned into aluminum casings. The aluminum casings are also being fed into our battery construction. Finally, we have a set of refineries that's taking some sulfur from a nearby sulfur node and combining that with water to make sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid, the aluminum casings, and aluminum solution are being sent into 12 blenders in order to make our batteries. This also produces a bit of excess water output, so those water lines are hooked back into the water main that encircles the entire platform and ensures that everything has all the water it needs. Now, these batteries are then being sent into a rather large storage system, as well as to a drone port to be sent off to our drone airport that we're constructing in the center of the map. Now, right now we are backlogged on our battery production so you can see a number of machines are yellow uh, that's simply because they can't produce their output because we're fully backlogged once we start making use of batteries then we will see these things uh, come back to life so this is perfectly tuned there were some issues with water i originally had more water extractors uh, but i i reduced those to three and then just tuned the clock speed so that the output from our refineries, our blenders, and our water extractors matches exactly the amount of water we need. This actually leads to a shortage as I save and reload the game due to a bug in Update 5. But the factory did run at 100% efficiency for several hours while I was doing some editing and other things. So uh, whatever inefficiencies are there are pretty, pretty minor, pretty minuscule. Our next step for today is going to be to pop over to the center of the map and set up a basic drone airport. This is going to be something that will expand a great deal in the future. We're going to get started with something small today. Let's head on over there. All right, and we are here above the Crater Lakes, and you can see we have a small drone airport that's just getting started here. This is literally just a platform with some drone ports built on top of it. I like using the, uh, the steel frame foundation as, for the look of these, it looks like a a good industrial support for the drone platforms. And you can see that we have one drone active right now. This is actually bringing batteries in from our drone port. And this thing is, is completely full at the moment. So it's, it's just sort of hanging out, waiting for there to be space to unload the batteries. Those batteries are going to be supplying the rest of our drone ports. And we're gonna have many more drone ports added here, potentially many layers of drone ports as well, depending on how we need. By my best approximation, we should be able to run between 60 and 100 drones off this drone port, depending on how far they have to fly, how frequently they have to fly. Uh, and so that means that, that we are gonna be making use of plenty of those batteries. And, and so that one supply drone will be doing, will be putting in quite a lot of work to make that happen. Now, the idea here is that we can expand this out to as many drone ports as we need. As we scale up, we're going to have to also scale up power production. So we'll probably only get started with this until we get nuclear power up and running, because that's going to be such a huge boost to our power supplies that it should be able to handle any number of drone ports that we want to build. Uh, but they do take 100 megawatts each. So even though I only have two of them plugged in, this is still 200 megawatts, and that's matching some of our other factories. So if we were to expand this out to, uh, you know, 15 or 20 or 30, 30 or 40 or 60 drone ports, then you can imagine that that would use a tremendous amount of power. Now, what we will be using this for as a central hub for distribution for a number of late game factories, as we mentioned, we'll mostly be processing our space elevator parts through this. And that's something we're gonna get into in our next episode as we start to set up some of our last major component factories and start to look at building uh, resource outposts for our final space elevator factory. All right, now before we head on to our next step, I do want to show you guys one more thing that is unique to drones that is a really big boon to making use of them. And that is that if you take a look at a drone port, you can see that the incoming and outgoing item areas are separate. This is unique. If you look at the other large scale logistics systems, both for vehicles and for trains, items are just sort of mixed together and you have to have additional uh, logistics processing to sort out what you want loaded or unloaded whether that's through the built-in features of a train station or through the use of multiple truck stations with splitters or however you decide to do it but with drones it's separate 
And that means that you can have multiple drone lines working from a single drone port. So for example, you could have a drone port at a steel factory that receives a drone bringing in steel ingots, sends those into the factory for processing into beams and pipes, and then has the beams and pipes going into the outbound section where another drone can pick them up and send them off to their destination. And so this allows you to daisy chain ports very effectively, and it's something that's unique to drones in this way. So that's definitely something we're gonna take advantage of as we have multiple production lines branching off of our central hub. Some of those may be multiple steps long using this technique. All right, now the last thing I want to do today is take a look at what our plans are going forward. If we look at our milestones that we have left to unlock, we have the hazmat suit. That's gonna have us setting up some filters. We will go ahead and uh, do that in a future episode. Probably the one where we, where we start to take a closer look into nuclear power. But I think before we do that, we're going to dive into advanced aluminum production and leading end production. Now we'd actually unlocked the advanced aluminum production as part of this episode in order to access crude oil over in the swamp. There are no oil nodes over there, but there was a crude oil well. So we were able to use a resource well pressurizer and extractor in order to take advantage of that and make the petroleum coke for our battery factory. However, there are, no, there are also a number of components that were unlocked with that technology that we will be taking a look at. In particular, the fused modular frame and cooling system are going to be pretty important for us, and we are going to have to figure out how to uh, tame and transport a great deal of nitrogen gas as well, because that's used in a number of late game recipes. So that's definitely going to be something we're taking a look at in our next episode. I think we're going to focus on getting those fused modular frames made. Now that'll open up the last set of production recipes for us, which is notably the turbo motor, which will which will also give us the Minor Mark III. And from there, we'll be able to take a deep dive into nuclear. So I think that provides a base. So I think that provides a basic roadmap for our next few episodes. I think our next one is going to be focused on working with nitrogen gas and getting those fused modular frames set up. And then we'll take a look at the turbo motors and finally do a deep dive into nuclear before we get into the end of our season, which will be a couple of episodes dedicated to the final space elevator parts. I think that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Leave a like if you haven't. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. My name is Ben Nicoba, and I hope you have an efficient day. I'll see you soon.